So I think both those lessons are really, really big. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Yes. When did you become so wise? <laughs> I knew you were an old soul, but my God. Having done like 20 of these, we sort of picked up say. on some abilities <laughs> to parrot back these ideas. All right, yeah, um, I'm Betty Nunu. I'm class of 2018, and I am currently in Houston, Texas. Uh, and I'm Jose Lopez, uh, class of 2017, currently visiting Betty in Houston, but I'm actually from Pomona, California. So, shout out West Coast. Um, I have two two coffee drinks in front of me, so I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of coffee stuff, a lot of trying to figure out the chemistry behind coffee because I majored in chemistry. So well, there's that. But uh, yeah, so I do a lot of coffee tasting, a lot of uh, coffee making, a lot of com community stuff, meeting with friends and whatnot, and just grabbing a cup of coffee, just really really getting to know people that way, so. I'm a bit of a fiend, so. Can attest, my coffee drinking has gone up considerably since Jose got here, okay, so. Okay, relax, relax. Yes. <laughs> it's only been four cups. Um, yeah, so for me, um, one, a hobby that I discovered at Williams that I really fell in love with was the Latin dance, and it's something that I've recently been able to reconnect with here in Houston. They have an excellent salsa scene in you know, addition to other types of Latin dance as well, and being able to start taking classes again, going to socials, and um, you know, meeting people through this shared um, connection or, or hobby has been really fun. So, so if I'm not mistaken, Ritmo is how you two got to know one another, right? It That's is. how we became best of pals. Yeah, so I'm about to start my third year at teaching at um, Yes Prep Public Schools, teaching ninth grade English. Um, if you had asked me when I left Williams if I would be teaching in a couple years, I probably would have said no. I wasn't 100% sure where I was going to end up, but it's been a really, really interesting experience and I've learned a lot. So. Yeah, third year going in, and I, I work at a school that is 98% um, Latinx, and I also live in my community, and um, you know I see my kids all over the place, so it's been it's been a good time. Um, and then for me, I'm actually a botanical chemist, so I work with a small contract lab that does um, that does uh, testing for big companies, um, any company that has as any sort of supplementation. So if, it, if somebody claims they have turmeric, if they have cranberry, if they have um, CBD, THC, whatever it is in their product, we they basically send us a sample uh, of whatever product they they have, and we test it, verify it. Um, so there are two steps. They can identify it, so um, our TLC department actually it identifies it and verifies that it is what they're saying. So if if um, so through so through HPTLC we test it, confirm our, that it fits the it fits our reference samples, and then and we we also have an analytical department that basically a if some if they say oh we have so if you ever see something that says like vitamin C like three thousand migs they have to test and prove that there's actually three thousand migs so the analytical department basically tests it and says like hey this is actually three thousand migs or actually you're lying to people it's three hundred migs. Uh, so it's it's just kind of like a confirmation and basically telling clients like hey like like this provider is uh, giving you the the good stuff or or whatnot so so it's it's pretty cool but um, in terms of would I have thought of myself as a botanical chemist in a couple of years absolutely not no uh, I was always very much research oriented I I did a little bit of polymer chemistry when I was in college as a part of my thesis so uh, for me to say that I was gonna I was gonna be a uh, really into botany now <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's very interesting but it's it's been a it's been a fun job and I really really enjoy what I do so far so, so you both sort of reference that this isn't exactly what you thought you'd end up doing oh god no. <laughs> how did you end up in in this line of work in both education and botanical chemistry um so for me it was more it was more indirect because when I left Williams, I actually couldn't find a chemistry job or at least a job in chemistry for almost an entire year. I actually worked retail um, for about a year before I actually landed something. And 
it wasn't, it, the funny thing is that I ended up working a retail job and then I met, through one of my managers, I met my supervisor at a, at a food lab. So because of that manager, it was like her cousin's girlfriend. And so she was like, hey, she actually works in a lab. Like I'll, I can shoot a recommendation over for you. And then I got an interview with that company, got hired. And then, then that supervisor ended up leaving the, the old job I was at um, a couple of years back. And so she left and I was like, I was miserable at that job. It wasn't a fun one. Uh, and then I left and like texted, texted my old supervisor, like, hey, I was like, if you guys are looking for a chemist, like, let me know. She was like, no, we're not looking for anyone. <laughs> and I was like, cool, thanks, appreciate it. But then a month later, she was like, hey, we're actually hiring on. Because uh, it's a small, it, like I said, it's a small contract lab. So it's like 40 people. I think we're almost up to 45 people now. So it's, it's a very small company. So the chances of me getting hired are like almost non-existent. But yeah, she, they, she heard about an opening and reached out and was like, hey, I'd like to have them on the team. So I ended up getting hired and now here we are. So it's kind of a little little windy road. How about you, Betty? Yeah, um, kind of a similar story. I left Williams, or I graduated from Williams, but went back home, which for me is originally Southeast Kansas, um, for about a year. And I'm from a very small town, like 30,000 people. And you know, in a small town, everyone's in everyone else's business. People heard that I was in town and the principal of my old high school heard that I was in town and that I had a degree in Spanish and they needed a long-term Spanish substitute um, for almost a whole semester. And he was like, hey, would you mind? This was also like the second week of August. Well, we're starting within a week. He's like, hey, would you mind coming in and, and teaching a few Spanish classes for the semester while our, our, while our teacher's on maternity leave? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing anything. Like, I just, <laughs> I was like, why not? This, this seems like it could be interesting. And I just enjoy teaching way more than I thought I would. Um, I taught Spanish one, three, and then a little bit of AP Spanish as well. And the kids were great. It was really interesting to work alongside teachers that had taught me before, even very recently, what, like four or five years earlier. Um, and so then I, while I love my hometown, didn't really want to stay in, in Kansas. So I started looking um, elsewhere and connected with um, another alum, um, Diana um, Pelaez, and she was in Houston and she was working for um, for a school here and so she was able to um, hook me up. So yeah, that's why I ended up here. That's awesome. It's, it's always really cool to hear about these very circuitous routes where people end up wherever they are. Yeah. Um, there's one thing that we've gotten to know pretty well is that no one's story is exactly as they expect. Um, there's oh, no. always random twists and turns. Um, and it's really exciting to hear you're both enjoying what you're doing um, because that, that's a really fun revelation, particularly for young alums, to really find something that is at least vaguely interesting yeah. um, so close after graduating. Um, so thank you for sharing all that. Oh, God. Um, I can go first with this one. So, Mine ties in, you know, fairly um, obviously here because I'm working with, you know, kids from the community. I'm living in the community that I teach in, and I think that has helped. I don't know. I just I feel like it would be weird if I was living on like, you know, the west side of Houston and then you know driving. Not only would the traffic be terrible, but you know, driving across town to teach every day. Um, living in the community, seeing the struggles and you know, alternatively, the opportunities and the joys that happen in the neighborhood um, every day has been eye-opening and I think it helps me connect with my students um, and uh, so that's just been a really, a really cool experience and getting to work with them in the classroom and then also, you know, through summer activities, programs, I haven't led any personally, but like, I live close to the school, so I'll hop over for a couple of days. I've like lifted with the kids before, like we like work out or whatever. And, and it's just, it's a fun time. So um, yeah, really enjoy doing that. That's very nice. Uh, <laughs> mine's more, mine's a little bit more obvious again, is that coffee. Uh, no, I actually, since I started drinking a lot of coffee, um, after college, I really got into it, and a ton of a ton of baristas in the local scene know me. So uh, I'm very much like I'll pop into a coffee shop, and I always like get I get the word from people, just kind of talking to them, seeing how they're doing, seeing what's seeing what's up in the area, and I'm always hearing from baristas like, hey, you have to go try this spot; it's really good. Whether if it's Mi Cafecito or uh, or what used to be Augie's, I've known so many spots now 
I have like my local spots that I go to every day. Mi cafecito, Caps and Drip, um, uh, Iron Ink Can, I'll go over the Verse Orangutan. They have a Claremont location now, which is clutch. It's in a movie theater, which is even better. Um, and basically, I just, I've, I've just like, I have just like, that's kind of my realm at this point. It's just like, I know them. I've become really good friends with a bunch of baristas. They're all really cool and they're always telling me really awesome things. Um, and actually, my Sierra, Sierra's husband, Luke, and I connect that way too. Uh, shout out to Sierra, that's uh, class of 17. And then Luke was 16, 15? 16. I think 16, yeah. But uh, he's all the way, he's all the way in Massachusetts, and we we've exchanged coffee beans before. And like when he was in California too, he asked me, he's like, what spot should I hit up? So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because friends will always hit me up and ask me like, hey, like what coffee spot should I hit up? And I'm just like, like that's the way I connect with the community. It's like I just go out, I have a cup of coffee with friends, and then just really. We just, you just really get to know people that way. What they like, what they don't like. Who likes oat milk lattes, who doesn't. Um, oat milk lattes are clutch. Oat milk is the best milk, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, I just, I, I love the community that I've, I've been able to know. And then, yeah, so it's just kind of around that. And then I have friends in LA that I just go out and see every once in a while. Like my two best friends, Sin and Anna. Amazing people that we also, I also happen to bring coffee to them all the time. <laughs> And so a, a lot of my life revolves around the coffee scene. So yeah, I'm I'm sorry that it's so much coffee, but it's 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 a it's a good way to keep me to keep me uh, energized. Um, yeah, I, I would say, I would say that um, everything I've learned from the chemistry department has basically like touched over to to what my life has been outside uh, professionally and whatnot it's I mean in time unfortunately I have to tie it back to coffee but it's just like the basic idea of chemistry I follow that trying to find like the best cup of coffee I can make it's like what things can you adjust to try and make things better so it's like you can change the temperature of the water you can I've invested so much money into all this stuff to, to like try and find precise things it's like like what region is are your beans coming from and just like that's just just my personal life, but in like in terms of professional settings, it's also it's also just like oh like like what can you talk to about people like what because chemistry can be a very niche thing. Uh, one chemist can be a biochemist and be very involved in that and have no idea what polymer chemistry is. So trying to trying to trying to find the common ground of like okay like how much how much knowledge do we share how much do we know where do we connect like what and so it's kind of like. There's very niche things and you can be very knowledgeable in all in your specified area, but that doesn't mean you're a professional and, and like very well, like you don't have all the knowledge needed. So it's it's never it's never a bad thing to like talk to other people and get an idea of what they know, slash how you can change things. So it's kind of it's kind of like a I guess I guess the biggest lesson I learned from there was uh, it's okay to ask for help uh, all the time. It, it's you don't know everything. You're not a well of knowledge all the time. Just Take it, take it, take what you know, and then see what other people know, and see how you can improve that way. So yeah, I guess I guess that's a pretty pretty um, basic answer, I guess. Good answer. <laughs> how about you, Betty? Um, yeah, I think mine's kind of like a two-parter. So, like I said, coming from a small town in southeast Kansas, I went to a public high school. So, on like on an academic level, Williams was definitely a push for me, especially in the first couple of years, as I think it is for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. um, and so, obviously, on an academic level, you know, lots to take away from there. But it can be also a very stressful environment. And so, one of my biggest takeaways is just like the people that you surround yourself with are so so important. They're going to make or break you, and you know, they can be in. A huge support, and so that Betty's is something that I've. <laughs> that's definitely something that I've taken beyond Williams, and you know, um, you know, continue my relationship from Williams, uh, uh, friendships from Williams, and build new ones beyond that. And then beyond that, like I said, Williams it pushes you. And so another thing is when I first got there, and I think this is true for a lot of, especially incoming freshmen, you're just used to. Maybe not, but for me anyway, I was kind of like, I'd, I'd been coasting through most of high school, and so then it was like, oh wait, there are so many people who are so smarter, like so much smarter than me, I'm very much in the middle of the pack, or below that now, like what is this? And that kind of pushed me to be okay with 
trying different things, right? And going outside my comfort zone. And it's okay if you don't know everything. So I guess to bounce off Jose's answer there a little bit, um, you know, go outside your comfort zone, try new things. Um, I teach, but I also work at a wine bar and I knew nothing about wine when I started working there. So it's just like, you know, when opportunities arise, take them, try them out, see where they go. And yeah. Um, I say, I would say one of the biggest things that brings me joy is being is having all of these friends all over the country. Um, uh, I, guess, I guess it's kind of corny because it's the use of the use on the movie as we're driving across the country, like seeing all the alumni. But it's actually kind of cool to be able to like catch one of my best pals from Williams uh, on this random trip. He's, random, he's interviewing me, which is really funny. But um, and then being still being able to see one of my other best friends, Betty. Um, so yeah, I guess it's the thing that brings me joy is being able to have all of these friends and seeing the avenues that they take and the avenues that they've come from um, and just see how much we've grown, see how much we've like, uh, expanded on ourselves. And it's, it's really fun to be able to, to see all of that and seeing it firsthand. Like it's cool to be in Houston. It's cool that I'm, I get to be here for a week and, uh, and just chill and hang out with Betty and see, we're gonna see a couple other friends. So it's, it's awesome to, to be able to experience that. So. So, yeah, I'd say. Um, not to sound like a broken record, but I've thought about this recently, and I think one of the things that just makes me happy is, like, period, um, is definitely dancing. It's a form of expression that I have it, I don't know, it's just, it's different. It's unlike anything else, and the fact that you can, like, partner with a complete stranger for three minutes and have an entire conversation and then, you know, part ways at the end of that and never see them again is like, it's very cool. Um, so I, I really enjoy dancing, meeting people through that, through that scene and um, just continuing to, you know, become like better in a technical sense, but just have fun. It's, it's really about the fun. So. What you're both sort of touching on here is a sense of personal connection with other people yes. in both the realm of dance and just generally being able to have friends that you can act with. Um, and getting getting to sort of be a part of those dynamics and really hear you know that friendships are really are meaningful to people um, has been really cool um, and so I'm I'm really glad to have gotten to know you both in my time at Williams um, and yeah it's really exciting to be able to sort of connect with people you know whether it's on dance whether it's in interviews whether it's just saying hi to people as you're traveling um, so that that sense of joy for others like coming from other people is, is something that. It's really, really special. Um, and so thank you both for sharing your space in this context um, and being so open with that. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> Hard to give you more time. No, no, I got it. I got you it. You sure? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm sure it's an answer you've heard before, but if, if I had to write a thank you note know, to one set of people, it would have to be my parents. I think, I mean, I don't have any kids of my own, but I imagine it's really hard to, you know, do all this work and put in all this money and like raise this human and then just let them go do their own thing and my parents have been nothing but supportive and first in letting me go across the country to a college that they'd never heard of and then you know move all the way down to texas far away from them and so that has just like really allowed me to grow and you know stretch my own legs and figure out my own my own thing and i really appreciate all that they've done for me um through their guidance and also their you know not overburied as I guess hands off a bird. Thank you. Um, and for me, it's like, it's, all, it's, I mean, obviously my parents are, are a huge, huge part of my life, but um, I, when you, when you said the question, the first thing that popped up was Christopher Go and Sarah Go. Um, basically like second parents to me when I was at Williams. Um, but yeah, Christopher Go just, uh, it really, he really saw me grow as a chemist from at the very beginning to the very end. Um, he was my, he was my first year advisor. He was my chemistry advisor. He was my thesis uh, advisor, and I took every single class he offered um, as a chemist. So he really saw me from point A to point B. He really saw me mature in that way. So I, I, I would, I would say that I would think I would write, thank you for, I mean, making me, a, making me a really awesome chemist. Uh, you really taught me a lot of, a lot of, aws a lot of awesome lessons, but at the same time, you also nurtured something in me that I, I think that I'll hold on to forever, and that's that's the love of like learning. So, 
Oh, very soft, very uh, very romantic idea. But uh, but yeah, he's uh, him and Sarah both both were very wonderful. Sarah being Sarah being more in the background of like like uh, of like talking to him and like like fostering fostering the relationship we had. And yeah, it was uh, very moving, very 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 deep connection that I share with them. So shout out to them. Thank you both for sharing that. I mean, it's it's really cool to have those sense of mentors and that like really strong grounding between you know family and educational mentors. Um, so getting to see both those thread lines, um, even though you think it's a cliche answer, it's not any less meaningful. And I'm sure both your parents and those professors are super proud of you both for all the work that you're doing. Um, <laughs> Because everything that you know you've gotten to share with us has been really, really cool. I mean, chemistry work is super important and really, really cool. Um, education and being mentors for students also really important, also really cool. Um, so we're really glad that you're able to share all of that with us and with everyone who follows the Use on the Move project. So, are there any final thoughts you'd like to share with anyone that comes across these audio casts and videos? Mm. <laughs> Probably being good to have prefaced us with that, so we would have thought of something. But uh, I uh, no, just enjoy the people you're around. Uh, enjoy the people you have. have. Have a good time. Grab a cup of coffee with them. I'm sorry, it's just coffee. Grab a cup of coffee. Um, but yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing groundbreaking. Um, if it's while you're at Williams, just like enjoy it. I know, it's, like it's annoying to hear alum say that all the time, but it really is like a crazy time and it, it won't happen again in the exact same way. So if you're at Williams, enjoy it. If it's post Williams, you know, like I said, find new people, um, keep those relationships strong and that's it. Make as many friends as you can. That's it. It's, it's, it's all about the It's friends. crucial. <laughs> so if, if, you, if you take anything from Williams, it's remember the people. Remember the people that you connect with, remember what they do, and sorry, I didn't mean to like jump into Betty's thing and like right off of that, but... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just connect with those people, really get to know them, and you'll have a, uh, you will not regret it. Even if you have possibly the worst experience at Williams, you will still have a really awesome time just because of the people you know. So, hold on to those people.